The history of the dwarves is one fraught with war and fragile alliances. While primarily known for their stout hearts and stoic mannerisms, dwarves nevertheless had a weakness, just like all the other races of Middle-earth. In their case, a love of coin and shiny things. This greed was ultimately what led to many of their trials and tribulations over the years. But to truly understand the history of the dwarves over the span of time within Middle-earth, we have to go back to the beginning of the First Age. And while the exact timeline is unknown, sometime after the elves had awoken, the Seven Fathers of the Dwarves were released from their stone chambers and first saw the light of Middle-earth. The eldest, during the first, wandered for some time until he founded the city of Khazad-dûm in the natural caves beneath Barad-Zinbur, Zirik-Zigl, and Bundushathur, three mighty peaks. This city, populated by the Longbeards, who were also known as Durin's folk, grew and prospered throughout the First Age. Meanwhile, far to the west of Khazad-dûm in Ered Luin, the great dwarven cities of Belagost and Nogrod were founded during the Years of the Trees, before the elves arrived in Beleriand. The dwarves of Belagost were known, among other things, as being the first to forge chainmail armor, and they also traded weapons of various types with the Sindar. These were also the dwarves that carved the Thousand Caves of Menegroth for Thingol, the Lord of Beleriand. At the same time, in Nogrod, the dwarven smith Teltkar forged Narsil and Angrist, a pair of weapons that would go down in history as two of the most important weapons in the history of Middle-earth, as well as the famed Dragon Helm of Dor Lumen, the Land of Echoes. But not all was peaceful for the dwarves of the First Age. War, it seems, is a natural part of the history of Middle-earth, and the dwarves were not immune to this. We can turn our eyes now to the dwarves of the Blue Mountains, those known as the Broadbeams and the Firebeards, who lived in Nagrod and Belagost, and joined against the forces of Melkor during the First Age. The history of the dwarves of the Blue Mountains during this part of the First Age does not end here. They not only played a great part in the making of Thingol's Halls of Menegroth, but also later aided in the delving of Nagrothrond, which was the stronghold built by Finrod Filagund, which delved into the banks of the river Narog in Beleriand. Now, Finrod richly rewarded the dwarves with treasures he had brought from Tyrion, and it was during this time that the dwarves of the Blue Mountains first created the Noglamir for Fenrod. Now, this was the most renowned of their works from the First Age, also known as the Elder Days, and it was an item of worth that would come to haunt these two families of dwarves later on in the First Age, ultimately leading to the ruin uh, at, well, we'll get into that later on in the video, so st just stick around. Located on the western bank of the river Narag, beneath the forested hills of Tor in Faroth, the caverns of Narog were actually first known as Nulakizdin, secretly inhabited by the petty dwarves before they were driven out. And from its first conception, the name Nargothron translates to underground fortress on the river Narog. Its petty dwarvish name, of course, being Nulukizidin at one point in time, but as was his wont, later in life, Tolkien changed things and ultimately devised the dwarvish name Narukathan instead, to which the elves then suffixed Rond to become known as Vaulted Dome. Also worth noting is that in Ariel's Old English translations, Nogothrond is referred as Heilindingaburg, city of the Heilindingas or Stengel the Borgburg. I'm probably butchering some of those, but hey, it is what it is. We have we have fun with these. The dwarves of Belagost were known as the only people capable of surviving the lethal dragonfire in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. 
This was the fifth battle in the Wars of Beleriand fought against the forces of Morgoth, also known as Melkor, and its name was taken from the first words of the Doom of Mandos, where it was said, Tears unnumbered ye shall shed. This battle was a major moment in the war as the elves took heavy casualties, which ultimately allowed Morgoth to gain dominance over Beleriand. But despite this fact, the dwarves had their moment of glory when Lord Azagal, who unfortunately passed in the battle, nevertheless stabbed Glaurung, the first dragon, marking a moment of historic glory for the dwarves. Not to let their cousins from Belagost steal the spotlight entirely, the dwarves of Nogrod's fight against Melkor was equally valiant, though it ultimately ended on less than stellar notes, because Thingol had hired these dwarves to take the Noglimir, the greatest of the pieces of jewelry ever forged by dwarven smiths, and place a Silmaril in it, thus melding together two of the greatest creations ever created by the elves and the dwarves. But by the time the dwarves had finished working on the Noglomir, uh, the Selmaril had unfortunately worked its magic on them, and the dwarves had become obsessed with the necklace, asking for it in payment for their labor. Now, Thingol had come alone to the meeting and became quite infuriated with the dwarves. Uh, he believed they had grown obsessed with the necklace because of the Silmaril, and he wasn't incorrect, but he himself had also become obsessed with it, and he refused the dwarves request. It was not a pleasant encounter. In his anger, Thingol said, How do ye of uncouth race dare to demand aught of me, Elu Thingol, Lord of Beleriand, whose life began by the waters of Quivian, and years uncounted ere the fathers of the stunted people awoke? Naturally, the dwarves were a little upset by being called stunted people, and they killed Thingol, taking the Nogamir and fleeing. A number of retaliatory actions followed this, and the Norgrid army was eventually destroyed by a force of the Lequindi and Ents. Both of these dwarven kingdoms would eventually be destroyed, along with nearly all of Beleriand after the War of Wrath and the Dwarvis refugees mainly resettled in Khazad Doom. If we go back to the beginning of this video, you'll recall they had prospered during the First Age in relative peace, colonizing the Iron Hills and the Grey Mountains and trading with the ancestors of the Northmen. The history of the Dwarves does not end with the First Age, however, and while the Third Age was perhaps the time when the Dwarves are most well known for their exploits, there was still plenty of action for them during the Second Age, which we will be exploring in the next video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, and support the channel to keep me on the air. Join as a member of the Adventurers Guild down below, support with a super thanks, or if you're here doing a premiere or live stream, don't forget to use super chats and stickers. Don't forget the Patreon page. We'll see everybody in the next video.